for more on China's football investment. I'm joined right now by Mark Dreyer. He's the founder of China Sports Insider. Mark, thanks for joining us. First of all, what's the motivation uh, for all these investments that the Chinese are making? Is it the fact that football gives a good return on investment? Is it personal loyalty to teams? Or is it a case of national pride? As we know, President Xi, big football fan. They want to host the cup. They want to win the World Cup. What's behind it? Well, it's a mixture of all things. I, I certainly don't think it's primarily a great investment, uh, certainly in the short term, but it's, it's politically mm. smart because of uh, President Xi Jinping's personal backing of the game. That's one thing. And also, the, the China has, uh, for the last year or so, been trying to reform the whole soccer industry as well as uh, drive the whole sports industry forward. So it makes sense from both a business and a political uh, 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 point of view to get involved in, in football right now in China. So all this investment, how's that going to affect China's homegrown players and China's football itself? Are we going to see some stars? Well, that's the big question. I don't expect to see any uh, new Chinese stars anytime soon. I mean, uh, one, one great example is, is with the Premier League in the UK, when that became arguably the strongest league in the world and, and it started to import lots of uh, foreign stars after the, the money from Sky Sports in 1992. Everyone thought this would be great for English youngsters because they'd be training with some of the best players day in, day out. In fact, what it really did was limit the opportunities that the English youngsters got, and that really hindered the development of the English national team. The worry is that the same thing will happen in China. All the starting spots will go to the uh, stars, although they do have uh, a quota placed uh, uh, in the Chinese league, so that is one positive. Uh, but, uh, you know, let, hopefully we can get some positives out of this and not uh, it won't be a, another hindrance to Chinese football. Yeah, another negative that's sort of been raised is that Chinese clubs, we said in our intro, they've broken the transfer record a lot. Do you think they're overplaying for some of these players? But absolutely, yes. I mean, everyone now knows that China has a great deal of money, and, that, and it sparked from several reasons, uh, longer-term factors, but more short-term, it's the new broadcast deal that was signed uh, a few months ago, which was 20 times the previous, an increase of 20 times on the previous deal. So everyone knows that China has money. Uh, corporate uh, companies are looking to invest in China. The sponsors are coming back. So there's all these brand-new revenue streams. So if someone's interested uh, and it's from China, then the price probably doubles or triples, and the wages go way up as well. Uh, also, talk to me about the comparisons between uh, English Premier League and Major Lo League Soccer here and their experiences in terms of uh, importing players. Are we in a truly globalised market here now? Are China competing for the best of the best in the world? I don't think so quite yet, but they're certainly, outside of Europe, they're certainly now uh, a force to be reckoned with. Arguably, uh, they've leapfrogged to the top of that second tier. I mean, I like to compare uh, the Chinese Super League with, with what MLS has done right. over the last decade or so. Uh, it, it's in, improved immeasurably both on and off the field over the last five years. And what is interesting is that with MLS, first of all, we had players in their late 30s, then mid-30s, and then when... Um, uh, Dempsey went, Clint Dempsey, who was still in his prime in, mm. in Spurs, came back to the States. That really marked a big change that they could attract the best players uh, in MLS. In China, we're now starting to see players who are still in their prime and arguably still going largely for, for, for you know, financial reasons. But it's great to see that we are seeing uh, uh, players still in their 20s, not in their late 30s, come to China. Yeah, the David Beckham Galaxy example is in my head, uh, and fans didn't like that. Um, why do some players get attracted to go and play in China? Uh, what kind of experience is it compared to, say, you know, MLS or the English uh, League? I mean, language is going to be a huge issue, yeah. obviously. If you've been playing in an English-speaking uh, atmosphere or league, or even, uh, you know, even at, in Europe, it's going to be more comfortable uh, for a lot of these players than in China, where it's, it's going to be extremely difficult for some of these people to settle, particularly if they're not in a Beijing or a Shanghai. There's maybe one or two other teammates, plus your whole entourage, and those are the only people who speak your language. That could be a big, big issue. So, you know, honestly, I don't want to be negative about this. I think there's a lot of positives about this move for the league as a whole, but, you know, the, not, all these, uh, not all these transfers are going to have happy endings. And some of these players will flee, I expect, within a matter of months, perhaps in the summer, return to clubs in Europe. Last question. I want you to sort out a fight we had in the office. Uh, all of my Chinese colleagues said that China actually invented football um, a long time ago. It was uh, Tzu Chu, they call it. You're a fellow Brit where all Brits think they invented football. Who's right? It's quite clear as far as I'm concerned. 
You can't just say if you're kicking a round object around outside that that is football. That's Suji. That's a different game. But as far as you and I are concerned, football comes from England. Uh, Mark Dre, I think you're going to have a lot of uh, angry Chinese people uh, contacting you now saying that is not the case. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it.